What's up guys and gals, Red Icing Guy back again, and you already know it's a Persona 5 video from the title, so let's get to it. Today's topic is the mystery brunette and possible unannounced party personas. We will start off with the mystery brunette since it will be quick. For those of you who don't watch the trailer frame by frame, or visit the forum slash message boards, the mystery brunette shows up in a split second in the pyramid scene. Wild speculation has been made about this character, but first I'll show you the scene where it happens. At the start of this clip, all the party members are bunched up into a collective blur. But right before a cloud of dust kicks up, we can see five human characters and Morgana on the right. Then after the dust cloud removes itself, we can see, but not clearly with my awful editing program, the back of the brunette's head. Now you may be asking, where is Ryuji? Well, he was running up front and the brunette is blocking him out in this picture. And to those thinking that this might be Ryuji, it doesn't seem that this light of sand would darken his hair color that much. Then you might be asking, why didn't she appear as a silhouette at the start? Because that scene wasn't in the game. That was obviously made for the trailer. When you look at that scene, the whole white lines turning into the Atlas symbol proves it's for self-promotion. Why the hell would they promote themselves mid-game? They're not Ubisoft. However, the pyramid scene is actually from an in-game cutscene, so we can derive information from it. So now that that's out of the way, let's get into some speculation. First and foremost, the question must be asked, is the brunette a party member? If my previous theory about people becoming the dungeon bosses is correct, could the brunette be the person who transformed into a boss? Well, even if that is the case, it may not mean both scenarios are possible. Yes, the pyramid is crumbling down, but we haven't seen that for the palace or any of the other dungeons yet. So they may be escorting the person who transformed into the boss out of the dungeon as it collapses. And for all we know, the brunette can pull Persona 4 and become a member of the party. Plus, if the stalker theory is true, if the palace did not crumble, that means the guy who transformed into the dungeon boss got out safely by another means. And there's no way in hell that Anne would let him on the team, so it's not going to be like Persona 4 completely. The second question that must be asked is, does she fit the profile of the group? Nothing can be said as yet, as six frames are not enough information to qualify anything. The only noticeable thing other than her hair is a piece of fabric waving behind her. I say her because most theorists out there believe that she will be a woman to even out the gender ratio. Anyways, if you want to see the fabric I mentioned, you will have to watch the trailer in another video, frame by frame, because my editing software isn't up to snuff. The fabric in question seems to be a scarf though, and some images of thieves involve a scarf but it's too broad of speculation to assure that. But before we move on to the next subject, I would like to point out that if this brunette is another party member, that makes her the sixth party member. If you played Persona 3 and 4, the sixth party member often takes the role as a new navigator as their persona can work better as a navigator than the natural abilities or equipment of the previous navigator. In thinking of personas for this brunette, if she is the sixth party member, Think something that can navigate, that still fits the theme of the Phantom Thieves. Alright, now that the whole six frames has been looked over a few times, let's move on to the next subject, possible party personas. As covered in the last video, the profile of each party persona we have seen fits only two criteria, thief and anti-authoritarian. Using these as a basis, I searched up characters that could fit the bill. First of all, the most obvious choice and the elephant in the room, Robin Hood. Everyone assumes that a later party member will have him or that he will make an appearance as a persona. Now this is just speculation, so don't take my word for it. But I have a feeling that Robin Hood will be a fusion only persona for the main character. He will require something like a maxed out social link and be very, very late in the game. The reason for this? Robin Hood is a little too obvious of a choice. The party wants to change society 
by taking the roles of thieves, so having one character personify the actions of the entire team other than the main character seems to be redundant, seeing as the main character is the leader of the group. All right, moving on. The next two I have even less information upon, but they fit the bill criteria-wise. Let's start off with a character most of you know thanks to Disney. If you are lazy or your brain is working too fast to realize who I'm talking about, it's Aladdin. Aladdin was a character from A Thousand and One Nights, a collection of short stories from the Middle East and South Asia. He was a thief throughout adolescence and later he basically stole an entire kingdom by marrying the Sultan's daughter. All of this while pretending to be a prince. The anti-authority aspect comes from his refusal to give the magic lamp to a sorcerer, known in the Disney movie as Jafar, because he realizes that the sorcerer sent many men to their deaths to retrieve it. If Aladdin is in the game, then he probably won't be named as we know him. They will probably name him Aladdin to throw off some of the potential issues. If Atlas portrays him anything like he is in the Disney movie, a lawsuit could follow. After Aladdin, we move on to a man with a funny name, Cartouche. If you have played the god-awful Assassin's Creed Unity, you would have probably noticed him even though they butchered his character. Cartouche was a French highwayman who would rob the stagecoaches of rich people. Later, authors would give him a quirky Robin Hood type personality to appease the revolutionary masses of that period of French history. That's all about I have on him since there are too many literary interpretations of him. However, I noticed a possible trend after researching Cartouche. There is a minor French theme going on with all the personas. Our scene was French. Captain Kidd would sometimes send his plunder to France rather than England to screw over the crown. Carmen is from an opera made by a French composer. Zorro had fights with French soldiers during the French occupation of Mexico. Robin Hood fought against French armies at different points in his life, in some of the tellings at least. And even Aladdin's story was brought to the rest of the world by a French translator. As to Goemon, well, shit. But yay to crackpot theories. Now the last persona I can think of is going to be controversial to some of the viewers. I wish to repeat that these are all based on speculation and whether right or wrong, even I'm suspicious about this choice. I'll just say it out now that this character is a detective. Please don't hurt me. Now that this is out of the way and the awkwardness is not stinging as much, let's go into the two possibilities of the character. First, is Inspector Ganimod. Ganimod was the rival of Arsene in the short stories, always chasing after Arsene, becoming turned around right before the moment of capture. Being directly attached to Arsene, Ganimod's chances of being the detective persona are high, but there are other possibilities. The second of the detectives is the most famous literary detective. No, not Batman, but rather Sherlock Holmes. Sherlock is also directly related to Arsene. In one of the short stories, Holmes and Arsene go head to head. Shortly afterwards, the author of Sherlock Holmes, Conan Doyle, got all uppity about his character being used in the Lupin series. In response to this, Lupin's author changed the name to Herlock Sholmes. And I'm not making that up. It's too stupid of a situation. However, if Sherlock is a persona, there is a possibility that he will be named Sholmes, both as an abbreviation and as a reference back to the Arsene series. Also, while researching this, I also came upon Irene Adler, and she too is a possibility, albeit not in the detective category. Now, why a detective, Red? You might ask. In retrospect, I should have started with this. There is some reasoning behind it. First of all, there is the corruption in the police force of Persona 5. How do you take down a corrupt police force? The answer is from within. To do that, you need a person in the police force or related to them. Either a whistleblower or a person to plant evidence. Secondly, the director has stated that an unknown force is hunting down the main characters and those close to them to further ruin their day. If a detective got close to them in order to bring the Phantom Thieves down, wouldn't that person 
also get swept into the chaos? Once seeing the world the thieves fight in, would it become a reason for them to team up with the thieves? Honestly, I don't know, but it's nice to think of it. Lastly, there is the whole one exception to the rule kind of thing. It is kind of difficult to see, but since when has the Persona series ever been straightforward? Well, that was a mind boggler, and I hoped you liked this video. Do you have any questions? Are there other details I missed? Do you have any Persona ideas of your own? Any personal theories you want to say? Leave a comment and I will get back to you. Trust me, I get back to 99% of the comments on this channel. Next week's video will be about important details I overlooked and how it supports some of the theories presented on this channel. Again, I cannot think of a closer, so goodbye.